I choose to marry. I have the right to marry whosoever I want. Hello, my own boss, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon. I greet you all according to your time. Yeah, my people. Please, if you have been watching my video, you never ever come across. Please, anytime you come across my video, subscribe. Thank you for doing that. God bless you. Yeah, my people. Now, about what did they apple for social media? And I know say this pastor when he marry another woman. So the woman now she cry come out too. So the new wife cry come and say, Wait, your husband bright talks in a lie. So yeah, we go see here the woman side. And I know say they talk and say they know they from one person mat. They take judgment. So I go leave us, make we watch the video. So anything you think about when she talk because now wait she talk for years. So now they share with us. So so anything you think for here, leave us for the comment section. So thank you for watching. God bless you and see you in my next video. Bye. Au revoir. I followed him borrowing money. He asked me to borrow money. I borrowed money in my school. They are still there. The debt of the money I borrowed, I'm still paying it till date. The, the money I borrowed is this pastor that is helping me now to foot those bills. I borrowed money for his sake, his student school fees that have hit like this, I'm, I'm, I'm paying it one by one grad. I've not finished paying the debt till now. Go to Holy Child School, Rimo Kushi and Ax. They are all aware of the story. It didn't end there. Now, after everything, we come to that place. We come to the house where we are living right now. Now, the thing is, feeding is a problem in the house. Ask Bright if he has given me upkeep since 11 years I've married him. Even if it is 5,000 Naira upkeep, go and ask him. Go and ask Bright if he has done anything. But I don't complain. It's normal. He may not have it. I keep living my life the way I'm living it. I keep surviving the way I'm surviving it. It didn't stop there. This same Bright, after one year, I returned back to him. Where he took me to the church. He has met uh, one church he wants to be attending. I should live with him and all that. I left with him. Now, the issue now is, at the end of it all, I came back, we started living outside the family. Brian started from where he stopped. He started the worst. The worst is that I shouldn't go to work. I should be a housewife during the pandemic. I shouldn't go anywhere. He called people. He said his men, the men, men are chasing me, are chasing men. He saw the body around me. He will nail them. He has done so many things. He chased people that call me mother away from me. The youths, the teenagers. He said they are all sleeping with me. That was it. So he told me that the only way for him to give me a total support into my music, because I have gone to the studio to do a skeletal work of my music, he said not in his house. Not in his house. Now, the issue now is that he said, I have affairs outside, that there are many men that are chasing me and all that, that I must take an oath for him. I must take an oath for him. He said, I should take an oath. That's the only way you will allow me to have peace in his house. I now begged him, if I take an oath, the record of the oath is with me. I recorded it. I have record of it the day I took the oath. I said, if I take an oath for you, will that make me to be a free woman? I can go. He said, I can go to the moon. He will be sleeping. I should take an oath that there is no man that is going to sleep with me, blah, blah. I said, is it for both of us? He said, no, it's just him alone. I took that oath for Bright just to prove to him that I am innocent. I took oath against my faith. I took oath against my faith just to prove to him that I don't have any skeleton in my cupboard. And I asked him, do you have peace? And I said, I have peace. But that is the worst. He started doing the worst. I'll go to borrow food outside. I'll go and, you know, no, just negligence. Sometimes they will go carry the children and buy them food for them to eat. Me, I will stay hungry. A neighbor will just give me food to eat. I will just be surviving it. I said, enough is enough. I'm not going to die. He looked at me one morning. He said, there is no marriage between us. That I'm just in his house wasting his time. That I'm a smelling thing. He chased me out of our room. That I'm a smelling thing. That smelling thing, he called smelling thing. He threw in the garbage. 
<laughs> he threw me in the garbage thinking I'm going to die. He says, weak, my life miserable. That when last I hear about his name, I will, I will run away. That's what he told me. And I told him I'm not going to die. That he's going to make my life miserable and all that. Now, the last straw that breaks the camel's back is that I refuse taking all these things. He told me vividly that number one, he's going to put acid in my cream. I don't want to bring my children into this because even my children became scared and they were crying. My son will embrace me. My son of four years will embrace me and say, Mommy, don't worry, I will take care of you. He abused me before my children. I don't talk. He called me a weak woman. And you came on social media to tarnish an innocent man's image. You came on social media, bright. You've done your worst. You want to get fame. You, you bent to your knee that you're going to destroy me. But let me tell you, this is my rising moment. You bent on your knees that over your dead body will you see me standing right and fulfilling my destiny. You throw me in the garbage. But the seed you throw in the garbage find a means of growing and becoming something. I decided to leave his house. How? When I left, when I, I left his house, one day he just locked me up and said, I'm not going for church program. That night, he locked the door and put the key in his pocket before my kids. I said, I was going to the extent that you start locking me and walking away. So anything can happen to me. If there's a fire outbreak, I can't escape anywhere. He told me that the children I'm even talking about, it's not when I'm alive to see them. I will start talking about them. When I'm alive, that when I'm dead, I'm rubbish, he move on with his life. Then highest his money. My people don't talk and all that. He locked me up. I packed my things before his eyes. I said, Bright, it is over. Bright, it is over. I'm not going to do this anymore. This is the last straw that will break the camel's back. I can't die in your house. I can't die because I want to prove myself. I want to prove myself that I'm, I'm, I'm a good woman. Before his eyes, I packed my bags. I kept them or what? He told me to leave. That I should leave self is done with me. That it's just his children I'm taking care of. I packed my bag and I kept it. The next month, my, that night, I escaped by my children. My daughter went and looked for spare key. And my son, they hid the key and come and give me and say, Mommy, run away. Mommy, escape. That was how I left the house that night. That was how I escaped out of that trap. In the morning, we pack our things. I packed the things, called a taxi, packed the things to my mother's house. That was on the 28th of November last year. Pastor Moses Adeyo was not in the picture. I have nothing with him then. I went to my mother's house. Bright knew that I'm in my mother's house. Even that day as I was going, he saw me. Let's talk. Okay, can we see? I told him, I'm not if you want us to talk, come to my mother's house. As he came to my mother's house, he saw me. I said, this is where we are. And this I want to be. I'm done. I pick up a Bible to renounce the oaths I took. He ran away. Immediately he saw me pick up a Bible. He left the house because he knew I want to renounce the oaths. I lured him one day in a restaurant. I have a record of it. The oath I renounced. I lured him, told my sister to follow me. I didn't tell my sister what I was going to do. Before I quickly bring up the Bible, I renounce the oath. I said, your oath is no longer binding me. I am a free woman. I can live my life. It's not working. Let's not kill ourselves. Go your way. Let me go my way. He said over his dead body. It was not enough. It was not enough. I left. I left to Lagos on the, on the second week of December. The first week of December. That's when I left Lagos. I was struggling. I will have to squat with a friend. Because if I'm in Buttercourt, Bright will, will ping me. Bright will trace me and will block my ways. That is his nature. He will always stop me on the road. I will cry, yo. I will be begging for rescue. I have to leave Buttercourt so that I can have my peace. I went to Lagos. I started my life afresh. I started squatting and squatting. I got a mini job in Lagos. Nobody knew my story. I covered up. I started my life afresh. I started any small small money to be able to take care of myself it didn't end there that was how it happened he was calling i said it's over now to make it official 
I came from Lagos to Port Harcourt in April. April. He said, I left his house in seven months and I ran and lived with Pastor Moses Adeyo. I've been in Lagos all this while. I came in April to my village. I went to my people and told them what has been going on. They shouted. I've been going through all this. I refuse telling them. They invited bride. The king of my community invited bride and his father. He called his father. His father refused answering him. His father did not respond because they all know the story. Bright came with his friend. They told him to go and bring his father. He didn't bring his father. We had an agreement. We, we went to my, my house. My uncles, my father, the people that gave me anti marriage sat. And they, I held my view. I opened my mouth and told them what has been happening. They all lamented. Even the friend he came with was shocked that he didn't tell him to this extent. Bright, they asked me if it is true. He said, yes, what I said was true. They said, but you never come to tell us that our doctor is not with you. You just sit it up all this while. But he said he doesn't know where I am, that I ran out of his house without his notice. He has been begging. Now, they asked me what I want. I told them that I'm, the marriage is over. I'm no longer interested. I want to move on and live my life. I'm no more interested. I have tried. This is the fourth time now. I can't be running and be coming back. I can't be running and coming back. That was how they, they said, okay, since you've decided to marry, we will not force you. Bright, our daughter says she's no longer interested. Whatever you've paid, they brought out the ledger, the off the family ledger where they put down anything that has been done or that has been paid, bright price. They check it and they found out that Bright did not pay bright price. And I can remember vividly before I returned after the one year, my uncle called him and said, You've not paid, we'll check in the list. There was no specific money. Come and do it. He just ignored it that he has married, he has married. Because the dowry is what they're supposed to refund him. Not like the money they bought for drink and all that. They said, we don't have anything. We wanted to refund you the, the dowry. Look at it. There is no dowry, specific amount, whether it's one naira or what. That was it. Before you know it, they told him, we would have collected the children self, but because we love you. Okay, go and take care of the children. Let our daughter leave. And make sure you don't come after her. He pleaded that they should give him more time to plead. It's okay, we'll give you two weeks. If you're able to talk to her after two weeks, she accepted, then you will come back. But if she didn't accept after two weeks, leave her alone. If you come after her, we'll come after you. I went back to Lagos. I went back to Lagos after the meeting. I wasn't with Pastor Moses Adeyo. Pastor Moses Adeyo is living in the church premises in World Bank Assembly. There are people there. I'm living in Lagos. I wasn't living with him. I went back to Lagos to continue my life. He do call me until I blocked him. I told him, don't disturb me again. There is nothing between us. I have moved on. I have, I will, if I want to live my life, I want to get married, whatever. He said, over his dead body, will I get married? Over his dead body, will I, I go to another man? Over his dead body, that is, is him for life and death, whatever. I told him, I have nothing to do with you. You don't owe my life. I have my life to live. Before I came, I came back two weeks ago. Even the day as I came back on Friday, he saw me on Sunday of it when he came to see the children in my mother's house. He saw me. He saw me. I wasn't in Pastor Moses' house. He said he doesn't know where I am. He saw me. And they, that why did I? I said I have nothing to do with you. If you want to take care of your children, these are our children. Take care of them. He saw me. It's my life. He dumped me in a dustbin. I know that trying to bury me. Another man picked me up and tried to give me a new life. And he just stand up to punish my image. He stood up to render another man, to render an innocent man's name useless. Just because he chose to identify with me. He promised me that there is no man that wants to stand for me, that he will make them miserable. And that is what he's trying to do. But my God has frustrated his counsel. I am alive today. And I'm happy. I don't want to ruin my happiness. But I pray that God will forgive you. I pray you find forgiveness before God bright. I pray that you go forgive you for tarnishing a man of God's image. You choose to tarnish his image because I choose to live. You want to dump me in the ground and I refuse. Now, there are so many women out there who are dying like this. And because of what the society will say, they choose to die. If I have died in bright house, people will say, why didn't you talk? There are women that are dying. Why didn't you live? 
I choose to live and I choose to find a new life and start a new life and I've committed the worst crime because I refuse to die in bright house. I refuse to go through the same pain and torture. My children are going through so much emotional torture now because of his attitude and things he has done to them. But I don't want to put them in the picture. I didn't do this for you to believe me. I don't need your belief. I don't need your opinion. I don't need your support. But the same way you guys carry evil news to go viral in the social media, I want you to tell the world that I'm a woman that has strived to survive out of this stuff for 11 good years. He knows 11 years of pain, 11 years of torture, 11 years of disgrace and humiliation. 11 all these things happen. Now, the thing is, anybody, it is my life, nobody's life. If Pastor Moses Adeyo, out of this, he's innocent. I'm begging you, leave the man of God out of this. Let Bright face me. People should tell Bright to come and face me. Let's let talk. him come and face me. I have some records of his strength. Let him come out and face me. I didn't want to talk, but he has pushed me to the wall before I go. Before I go, everybody is sympathizing with him. He's a free man right now. As many young ladies who are desiring husbands, Bright is free. I challenge you to go and marry Bright. So many of you that have daughters and sisters, go to his page, go and marry Bright. If you're able to live with him for three months, then you come back to me and shake my hand. Go and marry Bright. He has his friends who know this story. His club members know his story very well. Go and ask him what happened. Go and ask him what happened. Go and ask people that knows me. They all know. Go to Lumokroshi. There's nothing more. Go and ask about this story. I rest my case. If you're interested, you want to marry him, go ahead and marry Bright. He is there. I choose to live for life. I choose to be alive for my children. I choose to live to fulfill my destiny. I choose to be a strong woman. I don't want to talk about this. I have so many things to talk about, but I'm coming. I'm going to tell the world my story because my story is large. God gave me life and rescued me from the hand of a lion that wants to devour me for 11 years. I run and you guys feel I should remain there and die. And if I have died, the same world will say, why didn't she run for her life? And I choose to run out of my life and you guys want to... Now, take this video. Let him see it. Let the world see it. And let so many women that are into this pain see it. You have to be strong and come out of it. It doesn't matter what the world will tell you. It doesn't matter how they will name you and rob you nail. You can still be a better person. The Lord can still give you a second chance. The Lord can still give you a way of...